For today's quiz, I have a six volt battery and a light bulb that's also rated at six volts. If I connect a complete circuit, you can see that bulb illuminates. Our question for today is simply, if I were to take the light bulb, take a voltmeter, and then connect them in line with one another. So if I were to connect that meter into the light bulb, and then plug this back in, what would happen? Here's what your quiz looks like. As always, mark your answer as completely as possible and list your confidence. This quiz specifically asks, what's going to happen with the light bulb when I put the meter in here? Typical student responses are, first of all, the bulb's going to light just like it did before. Voltmeters are used all the time in electricity and circuits, and of course, everything's going to still work just fine and dandy. Others will say, no, 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 this light bulb is now going to share some of the battery with uh, the voltmeter, and therefore the bulb is going to end up not being as bright. And others will say, I think the bulb is going to stay the same brightness, and I really don't know what the voltmeter does. So they're just indifferent. Those are our typical responses. All right, let's go ahead and hook this up. I'll take my red wire to the positive, into the meter, out of the meter, to our light bulb and back to the battery. And when I plug this in, nothing happens. Why? Why is nothing happening? Well, to help us understand this, we can take a look at what this meter really is. So if I take the back cover off of this meter, we can see that there are big resistors here. Big meaning they have a lot of resistance. I'll hold up one of these other resistors uh, just to illustrate. This is about a 10,000 ohm resistor. This light bulb here might only be two or three ohms. So essentially nothing's gonna get through this resistor to make it to the light bulb. To help us understand a little bit more deeply what a voltmeter is doing, I think we should do a little in-depth analysis. To help us go in a little bit more depth about how a voltmeter works, I brought some tools over. First of all, a really nice analogy to use with uh, electricity is water flowing through a pipe. Here I've got a copper pipe and the water would be like our current. The pressure inside is what the voltmeter would be analogous to. The voltmeter would measure our electric pressure. Imagine if I wanted to take the pressure on any type of water line. I could use something like this. This is uh, just a pressure gauge. I could screw this on to a garden faucet or a sprinkler or whatever it is turn the water on, there's a nice O-ring ceiling in here, and what's gonna happen is there's a little piston in here and it's gonna end up being pushed down. And there's a rack and pinion gear that'll cause this dial to move. I can use a Dow indicator to show that. And so you'll notice if I move this rod up or down, you can see that our dial moves. I have a couple drawings that might help us understand this. So let's look at this pressure gauge first. And a lot of uh, times we're gonna end up saying, wait a second, this analogy is nice, but our voltmeter had an in and an out. This only has an in, it doesn't have an outlet. And I think you're gonna be able to see we're really not gonna need one, at least for the water. All right, I've got blue for water, the orange is gonna be for the pipe. And up here, I've got my spring. That spring is in blue. And then I've got this rack. And that's just a gear that's connected to a rod that can move up and down. But when we have the pinion gear, looks like the sun right there, as that rack goes up and down, it's gonna end up rotating the gear, which will cause our dial to move back and forth. Essentially, that's how this one works, okay? But notice the water doesn't go anywhere because it's sealed very tightly on uh, that O-ring. So it's never gonna go to the other side, but let's go ahead and draw that out. Here's another way to think of that. So now I can have an inlet and an outlet on this picture. You'll notice that I have water coming in on this side, but the water is not gonna be able to go past that black seal there. 
and it's never gonna make it to the other side. Hence the reason they didn't put an outflow on this meter. Another way to think of this might be to draw one other way. So in this case, I'm gonna have a pressure meter. I've got water that's coming in one side. And notice I have black springs on each side. This uh, part of the tube, let's just say instead of copper, I had lucite or something that you could see through. You've got this big slug in there and it fits perfectly within that uh, tube. So it's got a seal on each side. So that is just gonna end up being fixed in there. And I've got little buffer stops that will essentially keep it from uh, flowing down the pipe. If I have a lot of pressure on this side, and let's say I actually have an equal amount of pressure on the other side, this big slug in the middle would just kind of stay centered. That red indicator line can line up and we could say, oh, there's zero difference in our pressure. But if I had more pressure on one side and less on the other, it would end up indicating that by having the red line moving to the side. But again, any of the uh, water that came from this side never makes it to that other side. That explains why if I use a voltmeter, it's sealed too well. Nothing's gonna get through the circuit. The resistance is too great. So the reason why our light bulb didn't light up is because we have the voltmeter connected incorrectly. We like to say it's in line or in series, and essentially we get this effect. The water builds up on one side, can't make it through to the other. So what should we do? Well, we're gonna take our same meter here, and now I'm just gonna show you how we should hook it up. And this is gonna be in parallel. Notice the water can flow through here, but it can travel up here and push on this side. And on the other side, the water can end up pushing on this side. Now, in a tube of water, uh, one of your pipes in your house, there's not gonna be any difference. There would be zero difference between them here. And that's really what a voltmeter is gonna do for us. It's gonna tell us a voltage difference. However, if I had an obstruction here, or some kind of resistance in that uh, pipe, we would end up having more water pressure on this side and less on this side. And that red line would end up moving in that direction. So voltmeters should be connected in parallel, not series. That's our problem. And that's your quiz for today. Thank you for watching another Idealized Science Institute video. We are a nonprofit organization. If you like what you've seen, be sure to like and subscribe. And if you want, leave a comment below. It's helpful to us. If you can financially support us, go to our website and hit the donate button. If you can't, simply by sharing these videos with other teachers and students in your life will be helpful. While at our website, you'll find that we have our Idealized Science Institute book that'll help you engage your students in dialogic discourse. There you'll also find we have a podcast where we break down educational research. We also have long form lessons. If you're a teacher, you can watch these and go in the very next day and enact these. Along with this, we also have many other resources, including more quick quizzes. So thank you for watching and we hope to see you in the next one.